This program is part of the Cosmic Potato Podcast Network. For more shows like this, visit our website at CosmicPotatoNetwork.com. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. I am Iron Man. And welcome to World War G, episode 256. I'm Troy. I'm AJ. Uh, both of us looking very dapper today. Right? I yeah. Noticed. Probably the two best dressed geeks out there right <laughs> now. I, I had to give Troy a little bit of flack. I'm like, dude, you're wearing like a flannel vest or something. And you're like, it's well, just, I have a, what is it, a cardigan? I don't even know what they're called. It's just kind of a pullover type of sweater yeah. thing. See, I'm, ro- I'm rocking my like, uh, I don't even know what kind of. It's a Kangle hat. Kangle. I think that's what it's called. Right? Yeah. Uh, I picked it up in Minnesota years back. I'm like, yeah. seems like the kind of weather for that. You know? Actually, I know. I take that back. Kangle is uh, like a beret. It's not a beret. It's like, um, I don't know what you would call it. it, yeah. it, it it's like golfers wear that type of hat. Yeah. Um, people in England wear that type of hat. A bowler? Is no, that, it's not no. a bowler. Mm. I forget the name. Yeah. Anyway. I think people know what kind of how we're talking about, but yeah, looking all we're looking all snazzy today. Is it gonna be a classy episode? It is. Yeah. It is. Classy ass you, episode. <laughs> you you dress for like the, the occupation and the job and the thing that you want, you know? Mm-hmm. So if you want a classier episode, then you dress classier. That's right. Uh okay. <clears throat> So, let's get right into it with Today in Geek History. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's Today in Geek History! You can't see it, but Troy's like holding his pinky up and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make some tea here in a second. Ooh, I'll take some chamomile. <laughs> yeah, I know you're so little... Little, still a little congested. I can still kind of hear your yeah, voice a little bit. I know. Yeah. I can't help it. Um, okay. <clears throat> well, I didn't plan this, but there's actually, it's an actually another uh, Beatles today in geek history. Okay. In 1963, today on February 16th, Beatles top British rock charts with their song, Please Please Me. A lesser known Beatles song for sure. Um, I mean, popular around yeah, the globe. It, it was popular at the time, right? That's for sure. But nowadays, not a lot of people think of that one. No. Which I do have to say, like when we were talking about it last week, you sprinkled in quite a few different like references. Like, yeah. To, are you are you gonna ever like reveal any of these? Or? Um. No. Okay. See nope. Anybody... I'm I'm still waiting for people to. Uh, see if, if they caught them all. If they did, uh, send us a message. Yeah. Although, I wouldn't recommend holding your breath, though, Troy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's just being honest here. I know. But that's why I'm not going to reveal it. There you go. So. um, Yeah, that song was from their first, um, first album uh, called Please Please Me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was actually one of the first CDs that I ever had. Really? Yeah. Okay. Do you still remember what one of the first cassettes you had was? I had, I had Space Jam. <laughs> okay. I had Running with Scissors by Weird Al. Oh yeah. Yeah. I also had a, like a Smash Mouth one. That I remember purchasing that like. I don't long, think long time ago. I don't think I ever had any actual CDs or or cassette tapes. My brother had a lot of cassette yeah. tapes. Like well, he had a whole drawer full of cassette tapes. Well, the main reason that I purchased a couple of them is I had uh like a cassette player 
in my uh, Mustang. Yeah. So I would throw in some of those sometimes. But then, like, I started doing the whole, you know, you have the cassette that has the little wire. The little that you adapter. Can actually plug it in. Yeah, because I mainly yeah. purchased more CDs than anything else. Yours, yeah. 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 Um, cassettes were around at a time. I mean, when I was a kid and I didn't have any money or mm-hmm. I wasn't working or anything, so... It's not like you went out of your way to purchase a Walkman or something, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. Everything I had, it was kind of hand-me-downs from, from my brother, so. Um, okay. <clears throat> Let's get into This Week in Geek. This Week in Geek. Speaking of, like, you know, older things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> much, much um, older things. Much, much, much older things. So... You know, when when you're younger and a lot of topic of conversation, I remember, was about dinosaurs. Yeah. Especially back when we were younger and the first Jurassic Park came out and everybody was talking about dinosaurs. And it was always, what's your favorite dinosaur? What's your favorite dinosaur? And, and all that. Nobody- they, they've even gone so much like in the States to give each state its state dinosaur. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So... It's still it's still pretty relevant. Yeah. Um well, speaking of which, there's a new tyrannosaur species found dubbed Reaper of Death, which is an awesome name for a dinosaur. I want that to be our state like screw I mean, I, we got a cool we got the raptor, the Utah lo- raptor. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I'd rather have this dinosaur. I would too. just saying, just saying. Um Everybody's favorite serial serial killer is back, and no, we're not talking about Dexter. Ha ha ha, nerdist. Good job. Um, we're talking about the ultimate killing machine that was a tyrannosaur. But this time, a new species of the tyrant lizard has popped up, and it's been awarded the deadly moniker. Uh, okay, here's the Latin the Latin name. Uh, Thanatotheristus. Hang on, sound it out. Yeah, Thana. Tothiristus de Grutorum. De Grutorum. Mm. Or. It does sound classy. Yeah. yeah. Or Reaper of Death. Yeah, let's just call it the Reaper of Death. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, found in Canada recently, this fossil. Now, basically, what it is, why they're excited about this, is basically it's kind of a precursor uh, to the Tyrannosaurus Rex as we know it. Right. So this is kind of an early species of this ty- of the tyrannosaur that was previously unknown. Mhm. So it it's kind of giving scientists a glimpse into the evolution of the T-Rex. Right. That we didn't previously know about. Well, because a lot of the times like a lot of excavating happens in drier states or drier parts of the world, right? Right. Um, just because it's like a heck of a lot easier to kind of like dust it off and to excavate these things, mm-hmm. these creatures. But like when I think of Canada, it's, uh, there's a lot more lush, vibrant, like landscapes and not so much desert. Yeah. I mean, and it stays cooler a lot of the times in like certain parts of Canada. Like they pretty much have winter year round. <laughs> So I, I imagine it'd be really difficult to actually excavate. So you'd almost have to use those, what are they, how, like x-rays? Yeah. Take an x-ray of like the ground beneath you to try to see if there's anything mm-hmm. there first before you go digging. Um, so it would, it, it would probably take a lot longer to actually come across this this thing. You know, you, you, you get little small things saying like, oh, Perhaps about this far down there's some bones, but like to actually see what's beneath there, yeah. it's it's got to be difficult. Yeah. Does it say what part of Canada? <clears throat> uh, yeah, it does. Um, let's see. As you have reported, discovering a new species of Tyrannosaur, which was made by Jared Voris, a PhD student in the University of Calgary. That that is still uh, crazy and cool to me to think that they're discovering new things here about our planet. Yeah, you know that we've we've had all this time and like tons of people like devote their entire lives to these things, and then this random grad comes along and discovers this. Yeah, I think and he's like, oh, you get to name it. I think he said, you know, let's see, 
It's no wonder it was named Reaper Death, like yeah. this young grad. <laughs> it's like, um, I just ate some really like hot ghost peppers, you know, like, or and there was a hot sauce called Reaper of Death. So yeah, let's call it that. Uh, but the Sivor says that he thought the bones seemed unique because blah 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 blah. Um. Anyway, yeah, they found it in um, Alberta, okay. Canada. It measured two point four meters. At the hip and was an apex predator 79, 79 million years ago. Yeah, you know, just a hop, skip, and a jump. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, they have kind of an artist rendering of this, and it's basically it's basically just kind of a mini T-Rex. Okay. Um, Still proportions the same, where it's got like a huge head. Huge and like head. Tiny leg, yeah. or arms. Tiny little arms. Yeah. Always reminds me of Meet the Robinsons, that movie. I, I, I never liked the idea of, because like, I grew up watching Jurassic Park, and that to me is what a dinosaur looks like. And then they come along and say like, hey, there's all these different like other dinosaurs that actually, the dinosaurs, they looked more like birds. Yeah. I'm like, what the heck? Why are you ruining this I know. for me? Why are you ruining this for me? I know. And I, yeah, if... I mean, there, there's a uh, recently they they found this uh, fossilized dinosaur tail. Yeah, and it had feathers on it. It looked like it came from a bird. Yeah, that's so. just ruining it for me. I know it's it's the, not that exciting when you think about it like that, like big chickens running around. Do you think that they would ever change the look? Because Hollywood has its take and its look of what a dinosaur reptilian looks like, right? Yeah. But do you think that they would ever go as far as to actually make a more accurate looking dinosaur horror movie? I wouldn't be surprised. Right? Like, I could see a future Jurassic Park movie doing that. Okay. Um, and, like, having the dinosaurs start to, like, evolve to what they used to be. Or yeah. what they actually were. I think that would be... I think it would kind of be interesting to see. Yeah, the closest thing that like we can as we as geeks have seen this is like in Monster Hunter. They do have a lot of like bird esque type of creatures, and yeah. um, it's kind it's kind of cool. Like it, it's growing on me. But when they like put these crazy ornate like colors on these dinosaurs, like with the feathers, yeah. it just like seems out of place. Yeah, like, it looks it looks weird. Why would you want a dinosaur like that? Why wouldn't you want a dinosaur that would actually, like, blend into the environment and actually, like, you know, go undetected? Yeah. Right? But, yeah, no, it's just, it looks like a peacock running around, <laughs> which bugs me. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, but... A, a giant 50-foot peacock. Yeah. Deadly peacock. A reaper of death peacock. <laughs> the peacock reaper of death. Uh, Speaking of bones and... Scary stuff. Um, it's not it's not Halloween, but Red Dead Online is already getting spooky thanks to hackers who have recently released two-headed skeletons into the online sessions. These aggressive skeletons have started popping up in random games over the last few days, um, surprising and attacking, and like they're just running around attacking players. Um, so. This isn't, like, a new idea or where they actually got the idea for this skeleton. Because, like, a lot of times hackers, they'll just use the material and they'll just use the stuff that's already available in the game. Yeah. Because, you know, you can go through the, all the different codes and find something, like, cool or random and right. then play around with it. Um, this actually, this two-headed skeleton... It can be found in the game in like this random abandoned carnival, mm -hmm. um, and it was just kind of like chilling in the back corner. You have to like look through this gated little fence thing, and off to the right, like sitting down in this corner, um, is this is this two headed skeleton. But yeah, they're just going around um, hackers and jumping into sessions and attacking people with these skeletons. That would be annoying. <laughs> Very much so, especially since, like, um, in Red Dead, especially if you're playing online, you die, you lose all of, like, the stuff that you were working towards. You yeah. know, you, like, you lose um, some money, all the pelts that were on the back. You know, if you were out hunting, you lose all of those skins. Um, 
yeah, it's kind of a nuisance. It's not so bad, and like it makes the game cooler when it's like a bobcat or a couple of wolves come up on you, or even a bear. Bear, yeah. Yeah, and then just attack you. You know, you'll be out like a <laughs> one time I was playing online with some friends and I'm like, ah, I'm going to go do some like fishing and like, you know, hunt for, um, go hunting. But I was fishing and all of a sudden this like grizzly came out of the like and started like attacking me. I jumped into the water. Like I didn't care. My pole was still in the water, you know, like my horse like ran off. Yeah. Like I just wanted to survive. And it really, it was great. But like when Sounds people like bring other country song, <laughs> my pole was still in the water. <laughs> My horse ran off. Got attacked by a bear. Got attacked by a bear. Tore my face off. It's got potential. Yeah. No. Oh. Uh, really ref- reminiscent of the Revenant, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that would just like annoy the heck out of me. Like these hackers that do that. Um, like props for them for actually being able to bring it to life. Sure. But at the same time, it would get annoying. Uh, have you ever come and uh, come across like in all of your game playing? Ever come across a hacker? Mm, I think the very little time that I played World of Warcraft, mm-hmm. I think I did. I don't remember the exact <clears throat> the exact circumstance, but I remember being very annoyed. Yeah, like all of a sudden, like the person was just there, and they were basically unbeatable, and they just killed everybody. And then was gone. I've had a couple of times, like especially like playing multiplayer online, uh, like The Last of Us or even Modern Warfare. <clears throat> but like yeah. the coolest slash, like, well, I guess it was it was a pretty cool moment. Is like I'd kind of like beat up on this whole team, like took out their whole entire team by myself. And at the end of the match, they're just like, "Oh, you're hacking! You're hacking!" Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "I feel pretty good right now." Like, yeah. it's like, nope, I'm just good. <laughs> Uh, and then, like, PlayStation sends me an email that's just like, hey, you've been reported as hacking, yeah. you know, we're gonna go back and review your footage. Like, they didn't find anything or they didn't say anything else to me, but I'm like, man, they took it up, like, they took it up. Yeah, like, they did. Yeah, it, this escalated quickly. Gotta go check the game footage. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, uh, Disney Plus is coming out with not just you know, they're not just releasing all their uh, old Disney catalog and, and stuff like that. They're actually coming out with new programming, like we got The Mandalorian and, and all that. New Mighty Ducks series coming out. Well, they also are going to do a new Honey, I Shrunk the Kids movie. Um, and actually... I'm sorry, I take that back. The movie will be made for the theatrical side, not Disney Plus. Oh, so it'll actually be released in theaters. Oh, wow! But the cool thing about this is that uh, the former star of the Honey I Shrunk the Kids films, Rick Moranis, will be coming out of retirement to be in this film. Is he reprising his role? He or is. is he okay? Yep. So, between 1984 and 1989, Rick Moranis starred in... Now, here, here was his, his uh, filmography. Yeah. See if you've heard of any of these films. Okay. Ghostbusters. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah. Spaceballs. Okay. Ghostbusters 2. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Mm-hmm. And Parenthood. Yeah, I've heard of a few of those. Yeah. That's quite the man. Yeah. Wow, that's quite the, the list of movies. He was Rick Moranis was one of the biggest stars in the 80s early 90s. Oh yeah. A huge comedy star. And then all of a sudden he just disappeared. Was this after he doing just like retired. another like Honey I Shrunk the you know, uh, honey <laughs> movie, and then no, oh shoot, no. What actually happened is his wife died. Oh wow! And so he went and became kind of a full time dad for his kids. Props to him. Yeah, right. That's way cool. Well, it turns out that with this new movie, um, the director Joe Johnston, who directed the original one, will be back, and it will also star Josh Gad as Rick Moranis's son. So he'll be one of the ones that he shrunk back in the original film. And 
yeah, uh, Rick Moranis will be back as Wayne Zelinsky. Um, this will be crazy. This yeah. will be cool. Like, okay. So you have the the original director, the original star. So I, it it's got potential. It it really does because I feel like they would want to do it justice. You know, do due diligence and take like make a decent put together a decent movie and it's and it's got to be if if rick granis would come back because he turned down you know like appearing in ghostbusters and like he he turned that down so if he's coming back for this smart moves there's there's got to be something there right you think the director had like a large part to do with bringing him back probably He's like, I'll do it, but only if you do this, you know. But like, even you come back. I mean, yeah, he he turned down the Ghostbusters in 2016, but he also turned down this new one. He turned that down too. Oh wow! Yeah, which has a heck of a lot more potential. Yeah. So I don't know. There's something with this new Honey I Shrunk the Kids. Plus, with the technology that we have today, that could be pretty cool. Very yeah yeah. You could make the actual shrinking thing look actually decent instead of kids walking around on an obvious blue screen or green screen or Mm -hmm. however they did at the time. All righty. Yeah. So there you go. Um, So things that were popular back in the day. (laughs) um, This is another thing. Uh, It was a rare Pokemon card that was sold for $60,000 that ended up getting lost in the mail. The so what what kind of happened in a nutshell is well, first initially, this is this rare card, it's a trainer number 3 um which was only ever I don't ever, know what that means. Um so they had like those training cards that would do like additional stuff to like heal your pokemon or revive them or you know you had like okay you had like your pokemon cards you had like the different um you know whether it was fire like uh water yeah uh, white you know whichever yeah, yeah, whichever yeah. ones um but then you also had these other like helpful cards that you could throw down occasionally that would like revive your creatures or you know do do specific things for them uh-huh um, so this was like a trainer number three, but it was only ever given out to this, like they had this Japanese, um, se- super secret battle <laughs> that happened in Japan <laughs> in 1999 and it was only given out to the third place winner. Right. So it was like, there's not many cards out there and you had to have won this, but like it ended up making its way to a collector and he ended up selling it, um, online and then he sent the card after selling it. He sent it via USPS. Uh, or, yeah, USPS. And you can only put up insurance on it up to $50,000. Um, and he sent it to the guy. But the person got it in, like, a bundle. Like, he was receiving, like, a ton of different things. Yeah. So he signed for it, but he's claiming that he didn't ever receive it. And there's no way of tracking it because it's not one individual card. It's like a whole bunch of stuff that he signed for. Right. right? Kind of a package deal. So the the fact that he signed for it. Makes it so that he can't, like they can't do like an insurance claim on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's like, well, we got a signature. We got, you know, you signed for this. Um, he also can't go after the guy that sent it to him either. Correct. So he's kind of, he's kind of screwed. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. But like it's such a rare card and there's only so few of them. It's not like he could just lie about it and say, yeah, I didn't get it. Yeah. And then try to sell it somewhere else. Yeah. Because they're going to know, you know, where it came from and like, aha, look, you had it the whole entire time and this is fraud. So now we're going to like, you know, put you in jail. And I, I just kind (laughs) of, I didn't even really read the story. I just assumed that both parties involved were male. Yeah. Because, of course they were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but that is just crazy to yeah, me. Yeah, that if, sucks. If I sold something that expensive, I would probably drive to that person's house to drop it off and deliver it. Yeah. Right? I can't I can't imagine entrusting like 
the U.S. Post Office with this. No. No. You stick that thing in a briefcase, you handcuff it to your wrist, yeah. and you drive wherever that person is and hand deliver it. Right? Even if you were to take a, a plane, you know, and you fly there to that place, uh, it's got to be like, you know, what, you're out a thousand bucks? That would be a good premise for a movie. Yeah? Yeah. That you have to that you have this rare Pokemon card that mm-hmm. somebody sells to somebody else, yeah, and they don't want to ship it, so it becomes a road trip movie with this Pokemon card. Like it, like his car could get stolen with it in it, or you know, he, he has to go. Something happens to the briefcase and he has to go track it down. Basically, and... Team Rocket comes out of nowhere yeah. and like tries to steal <laughs> it as well. But like, it, it would... gets thrown in a river or something. It would be pretty comedical, like comical, because like I, I think it's really funny if you had to explain it to somebody else. You're just like, um, wait, what are you doing with this briefcase? You know, has it got like a lot of money, gold or something? You're like, it's got a Pokemon card. Mm. In it. <laughs> or uh. you don't even know what's. In the briefcase, like a Pulp Fiction type of thing. Yeah. Like, you just see that he sold something, and you never find out what's in the briefcase till the very end. It turns out it's this rare Pokemon. <laughs> I think that'd be funny. Huh? It's got, it's yeah. got potential. Whole road, it could be a whole road, road trip movie, and it'd be all zany and wacky. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, speaking of 90s things. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Paul Dini is returning to Batman the Animated Series, but don't get too excited, because actually it's just, he's coming back to comic books. Okay. So it's not going to be like an actual like reboot of the show or anything. Yeah. But it's actually going to be a new comic book series. Now, they have tried this in the past with some uh, things that are really like beloved to me, and I just haven't really like gotten that invested in it well here's what's gonna happen maybe maybe we'll with this because it's a it's a limited run okay so the continuity of batman the animated series will return in a six issue digital first limited series uh starting in april titled batman the adventures continue the title will be written by batman the animated series co-creator paul dini and longtime writer for the show and its spin-offs alan burnett the series will be drawn by Ty Templeton. Um, let's see. Record this Batman. So they're doing a digital first. So I would imagine, like, and kind of just assume that it's going to be released on DC Universe beforehand, right? That's Possibly. the platform. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. The adventure continues will feature characters which didn't appear in the original TV show, including Jason Todd. Uh, the Red Hood, Deathstroke, Azrael, and more. So that'd be kind of cool to see those characters in kind of that Batman animated series type style. Right. Animation style. That'd be kind of cool. But yeah. I do like that one of the co-creators of the series is coming back and also one of the writers of the series is coming back. So they're not going to like want to mess with anything else and kind of like change up everything? Yeah, like it'll actually feel like you know, like the series did. Right. So, which is the writing in that series is fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like it, it's on par with like a lot of these movies that are coming out. Yeah. Today. I remember, remember as a kid, that was the first time in that series that I heard a character say, Oh my God. Yeah. Like, <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> You're like, I'm watching a grown up show. Wow. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, no. Yeah, yeah, I think I would be more interested to see what they do with this. Um, I do I do hope that they also make some sort of a book and put them all together. With yeah. Perhaps some extra, you know, like, um, what is it, like when they do like the art and they just throw it in the back of the yeah. book. Like, extra art, extra content, something at all. Because, like, if it's just, like, six standalone kind of um, issues. Well, I wonder, it might be, like, an overarching story, I would imagine. Yeah. I don't know. Do we remember where exactly uh, Batman was left off? Because I I remember, like, it had kind of a finite... Well, like more of like just a it ended. It just yeah, it just ended. Um, that was the thing with that series. 
it was it was just episodic. It just went from episode to episode. Like there wasn't like this overarching story. Mm-hmm. Like like uh, Spider Man the animated series or X Men the animated series. Did they have an like, overarching story with like uh, Superman made by the same guys? N- no, no, it was it just, just episode episode episode. episode, episode kind of yeah, deal, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I don't remember the final episode of Batman because, like you said, it just kind of ended. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd have to go back and look. I have them on DVD, but yeah. I don't know. It might be worth checking out. I, I hope it's really decent. Like, I, I enjoyed I know it gets a lot of flack, but I liked the um, Samurai Jack when they came back for a fifth season. You know, kind of yeah. deal. Like, this extra I content. It's like a blast from the past. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so, Star Wars, um, Diego Luna, uh, Luna confirmed for Rogue One prequel will start shooting this year. That's right. We're getting another, well, so, try to wrap your head around this. It's a prequel, prequel, that's a sequel to the prequel, that's a sequel to the prequel. Right? <laughs> like, it took me a minute to kind of, like, put this together, but... All right, all right, say that again. Say it one more time. Okay. It's a prequel prequel that's a sequel to the prequel. Okay, right. Stop right there. So, it's a prequel prequel? Correct, because Rogue One is a prequel. Right. So, it's a prequel to the prequel. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's got a, that. That's a sequel. That's a sequel. Okay. So Correct. it's Okay. To the prequel. To the prequel. So it's. Are they still talking about Rogue One? No, I, so I think they're a, talking about the overall like Star Wars. Like, oh, okay, franchise. okay, okay, okay. I see what you're saying. So it's a sequel to the prequels. Okay. Yes. Got it. That's On, a sequel. That's a sequel to the prequel. To the prequel. Correct. So, okay, A to B to C. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah. On board. I I feel like the reason that they're doing this is because Rogue One, you know, like a lot of people will say like, you know, the best thing to come out of like these Star Wars movies was Rogue One and then The Mandalorian. Yeah. Like everything else is like, eh, it yeah. was it was okay. You know, the final like final movie was decent. They kind of like tied it together, this whole saga together. But because they had so much success with Rogue One, I think they're trying to just milk it for everything it's worth. Yeah. Which bugs me because this is already like a movie that has an ending. You know, there's nothing. There's nothing that can come be like after it. After that, yeah, yeah. At least with those characters. Yeah, yeah. I uh, the Diego Luna character. I, f- I forgot his name. I think it's Cassian. Yeah, Cassian Andor. He wasn't that interesting to me. Like I just. I don't think this needs to happen, frankly. No. No. Like, I'm not I'm not excited to see this. I'm not... No. I'm about exci- as excited to see this one as I am to see, like, the Solo movie. I'm yeah. Watching, yeah. Yeah. Well, as I was to see that movie. It's like, mm. It's like, does this really need to exist? Like, I don't, I don't think it does. There's so many other stories and so many other things that you could be doing. You know, like, you finish this off, like, let Sleeping Dogs Lie... And go work on something new. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, I don't know. Let's let's keep Star Wars just, you know, let's roll out the Mandalorian and let's just kind of leave it at that for now. Yeah. You got the the last season of Star Wars Rebels, or not Rebels, um, the Clone Wars coming out mm-hmm. on Disney+. Plus. Fine. Have that. Have the Mandalorian and let's just... Let's just let Star Wars lie for a while. Yeah. It's not like Disney doesn't have enough other properties and projects and stuff that they could be working on. Like Han Solo and Carbonite, let's just take our Star Wars, freeze it, and put it on the wall for for a while. Yeah. Okay. Uh, So, we have a new segment that we introduced a few weeks back. That we're calling Troy's Toys. <laughs> Seems like the appropriate way to say that. Yeah. Troy's Toys. 
Uh, so this time, <laughs> and basically what I do is I find some toys, but it'll probably be action figures most of the time that maybe if you're like me and if you're kind of an adult collector, yeah. you might want to go pick these up. So first one I'll talk about is this one here. This is the Black Series Ray figure uh, from episode nine. That actually looks like her. Yeah. Like it's a fairly it's a fairly decent figure. It's very um articulated. Uh it comes with her I don't have it there, but it comes with her staff. It comes with a little uh Dio character, that little droid comes with the blaster that you can take out of the holster. You can actually take out of the holster. That's yeah. legit. That's awesome. And that blaster stays in that holster really well. Right. Like a bunch of times with action figures like that, if you have a gun and a holster, sometimes it's easy to fall out. Mm-hmm. That one really stays in there. So that's this one cool. you could actually like, if you were to throw this into like a toy bin, yeah, the blaster's not coming out. No, no, it's gonna stay there. And I love how like even with even though it's plastic, this legit looks like cloth. Yeah, that she's wearing. You know, because she's got kind of that like tunic. I don't even what, what do you yeah, call it? Yeah, you can call it a tunic. Sure. Yeah. Um, it looks really legit. Plus, like, well, okay. Uh, she has kind of a couple of different poses that she can do, but for the most part, she's pretty stationary due to this right leg. Yeah, the yeah, I mean, you can you can. She's got kind of like a crouching stance, right? No, you can move it around a little bit. See, you can move it around. Okay. Um, is that arm as well? Yeah, you, you can move. You can move. Well, that was just the pose that I had her in. Oh, okay, See? gotcha. Yeah. So I mean she is she is pretty articulated. Yeah. And a lot of the times with these Star Wars figures, especially with the female figures, the body looks really weird. Mm-hmm. Like they'll have this really big head and these skinny tiny little arms like Marvel the Legends. Proportions figures. are like way off. Yeah, yeah. Way off. But this one actually looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. It looks really decent. I like it. Yeah. Um, even that lightsaber looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. It comes with uh the Luke's old lightsaber and yeah. I'm really surprised that they didn't like... Re- well, did this come out before the movie? Uh, they usually do, yes. Right. So that's why I was thinking, I'm like, well, you wouldn't want to throw in our new lightsaber, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> that would be a little bit of a spoiler. Um, so this next one... Hey, let me grab, let me grab the box. So I'll tell you what company this is. So this next one is uh, the Lightning Collection, Power Rangers, Lightning, uh, yeah, Lightning Collection. This is from Hasbro, and I came across this, this is the Red Ranger, the OG Red Ranger, who was always my favorite back in the day. Yeah. Like, everybody liked the Green Ranger, that I always liked the Red Ranger. Um, and so I, I, I picked him up because they have a bunch of different figures from Power Rangers, like from all the series. This is the only one I ever watched. So when I saw him, I had to pick him up. Now I've had Power Rangers toys in the past, but the problem is they were just so stiff and they were crappy. This was like one of the first really good, legit figures I've seen in a while. Oh Yeah. His gun also stays in the holster pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's meant to stay. Oh, no. Nope. Okay. Yeah, it can come out. It can yeah. come out. Now, he comes with also several, a uh, couple different hands you can pick. Uh, he comes with an unmasked version of his head. Um, you can pop that head off and stick another head on. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, he comes with his little sword there. Uh, the sword comes with a cool little lightning effect. Again, he's extremely articulated. Yeah, okay. Speaking of which, um, a lot of the times you'll just get these these characters that can move at the waist. Yeah. Right? No, this dude, he's actually able to move in the like in the chest mm-hmm. area. Yeah, like he has cool. like a rib cage that he can... Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it looks like. That's... That's actually pretty cool. I don't think I've ever seen that in a an action figure before. 
Some of the Marvel Legends figures has it. Oh, really? Okay. But yeah, it is. It is an, a fairly new feature that they're they've put into action figures as like the past decade. Because then you can actually like arc back his back or like put it forward, mm-hmm. kind of a deal. Yeah, kind of crouching and yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's it's a really it's a really cool looking figure. Do you think you'd have to have, like eventually get the whole set? Of course. Okay, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he was the only one. He was the only one that I found um, from the original original group. So now this last one uh, is from McFarlane's Toys, and surprise, surprise, it's Superman. <laughs> yeah. Now McFarlane's Toys. If you don't know, it's it's Todd McFarlane. He was the creator of Spawn. Spawn. Yeah. Um, and he had his own little. Or still has his own little toy line. Now, before, what they were was basically just uh, statues, right? Right. Uh, like the really high-end kind of statues. I think my brother had a few, actually. I've got, like, a couple of them. I, I've got a Spawn one, and then I've also got a couple of different, like, creatures that yeah. were, like, they found from hell. And they're they're great-looking statues. Oh, yeah. That you can, you know, set on a mantle or something. They look really good. So, this was kind of his... One of his first forays into actual action figures. Now, the reason I picked this up um, is, first of all, it's Superman. Yeah. Uh, Second of all, it's based off the design of my favorite comic book, or one of my favorite comic book artists, Jim Lee. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's he's big. He's heavy. um, It's a solid piece. yeah. Yeah. Like, it's one of the better Superman figures I've seen in a long time. I do like, because I have that Spawn uh, character, their capes look pretty identical. Yeah. Like, really similar. Kind of, it looks like it's, like, waving in the wind, and it actually kind of follows them. Yeah, see, I've always preferred, like, the plastic cape to, like, the cloth one. Right. Sometimes they'll do, like, I, I, I prefer the plastic one because it, it just looks better to me. It really does. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would imagine, okay, so there's certain characters that I'm kind of like, well, especially Batman, I'm really particular on if they actually nailed the look of Batman to me. Yeah. Right? I get that you can have, like, an older, younger, like, there's different, like, there's quite a few different Batmans, but I'm really particular, and I'm just like, ah, I've seen a lot of, like, crappy ones, but this actually looks like a really legit uh, Superman. Mm-hmm. I, I like how even, like, the, the emblem kind of, like, stands out. Yeah, it, it's kind of it's kind of shiny. It is, yeah, which kind of, like... <sighs> Which goes really well because it contrasts with the blue that seems more like a, like a matte finish. Yeah, right. Definitely Where more muted. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't like reflect any type of like light, and then you've got this like this bright you know mm-hmm. s. And his hair, you can tell, is shiny as well. Yes. So it looks like there's a little bit of blue in his hair as well. There probably is. Yeah. yeah. Well, there there really is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's oh yeah, there is. Yeah, and it's just again it also has that that rib cage feature mm-hmm. you can use. But yeah, it's it's it looks legit. Like that, that looks like a legit Superman figure. And I like how it's even on a stand, which is kind of cool because like the Spawn uh, character that I have, he's standing on this like um, pile of uh, skulls. Yeah, and you can actually. Uh, position him just right to where he's standing like on top of it and he's kind of got that like captain morgan kind of a pose right going right on. right right yeah so <laughs> that is that that's really cool yeah it is really cool and that was like one of his first that he's done mcfarland's kind of branching into superheroes yeah well like i think he's done superheroes before but this is the first time we've actually been like action figures right okay yeah. Uh, the other cool thing is with these figures is they've come out speaking of batman the animated series with figures from that. Yeah. So in that style and in that shape. where And they're also this size and, and they're all big and stuff. I was tempted because I saw uh, Green Lantern. Yeah. From the Justice League cartoon. Mm-hmm. They had him. Like, oh, that's really cool looking. But... I can I can already picture exactly how he looks yeah. too. Kind of like the they do have the, a little bit of a thinner waist, thinner legs. Yes, they do. Right, kind thinner of waist. Chest. Yeah, and really tiny feet for some reason. <laughs> so I wasn't sure how well like he'd be able to stand because he looked 
they look very top heavy. Right. Um, but yeah, but I, I had to get this. Oh yeah. Jim Lee Superman inspired that's, figure. That's legit. Yeah. Now each one of these is going to run you probably a little over 20 bucks. Okay. Give or take. Yeah. But to have like a nice piece that you can display. That's, yeah. That's really awesome. I like. I even like the stand where it's kind of looks like almost like a glass stand, mm-hmm. uh, and it's got like what the DC logo on it. Mm-hmm. The other cool thing with this stand is it comes with like you see right there. There's like a little space. Yeah. You can slide it in, and there's actually an arm that comes with it that wraps around his waist, so you can make it look like he's flying. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. It's really cool. Like for for the money you spend, like you get a good detailed figure that you that's really again really articulated and it just it looks really good. It looks the part, yeah. Yeah. So for each one of these, I think I'm doing like out of five woodies, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um so for Ray, I'm giving her Probably a probably a four. Okay. Because I have other, or I've looked at other uh, Star Wars black figures. Some are hit and miss. I think that one's really good looking. Yeah. The Power Rangers figure, I'm also giving four, maybe even four and a half. Okay. Because it comes with accessories. It comes with the gun, the sword, the interchangeable head, hands. Yeah. Um... And it's on, on looks, it falls a little bit like shorter than I, I would say the Ray figure. But as far as accessories go, that yeah. kind of bumps it up a little bit. And then the Superman figure, I got to get five. Yeah, five out of five. Because full Woody, <laughs> yep, I'm giving him a full Woody. <coughs> because as someone who's had a bunch of Superman figures growing up, yeah, is by far probably the best one I've had. Yeah. And I think he comes with different hands. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he does. He comes. He does. He comes with a few other hands, so better for posing and, and stuff like that. Are you able like to that. get like the whole with this collect, like with this line, the whole Justice League? Maybe eventually. Okay. But like right now, he has Superman, Jim Lee style, Batman and Jim Lee style, uh, Batman the animated series, Superman from the animated series, and then the Green Lantern. Okay. I think. Those are all the only ones I saw. Yeah. There, there might be more, but those are the only ones. Wait, so. And where were you where? picking these ones up at? I picked the Superman up at Walmart. Yeah. I picked the Ray. Um, I picked the Ray up at Walmart, but the Power Ranger I picked up at Entertain Mart. Okay. Yeah. But they do have I a bunch of... I to make a trip to Walmart. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do have a bunch of... Other Power Rangers figures at Walmart, but they didn't have any of the originals. Okay. So, yeah. Huh. So yeah, there you go. Very nice. Um, and I'll I'll take pictures of these and I'll post them up on our page so everybody can kind of see what we're talking about here. Um. Okay. So, hang on. Let me get to my get to my thing. Uh, kind of a shorter episode this time. Yeah. Oh, well, that's all right. Yeah. But here's where you can find all, all of our other episodes. You can go to worldwarg.podbean.com. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, and cosmicpotatonetwork.com, uh, or wherever you get podcasts. You can go to facebook.com slash worldwargpodcast on the social media. We're also on Twitter and Instagram. Just search at WWG Podcast. You can find all of our merchandise at shop.spreadshirt.com slash World War G. You can also email us anytime. Day or night. At worldwgpodcast at gmail.com. You can also call or text the show on the listener line at any time at 385-240-1692. And that being said... What we're going to start doing, uh, again, we want your reviews of stuff. Yes. 
if you saw a TV show or a movie or whatever. We, we have only seen like a limited amount of things, right? Yeah. There's only so many things that we can view. Yeah. So it definitely, we're reaching out to you guys, you know, to help. Yeah, and, and use that listener line to call us um, and just leave a little quick review of, of whatever it is. Yeah. And uh, we'll, play it on, we'll play it on the show. So this will be something to look forward to, I think. Yeah. But anyway, this has been uh, World War G episode 256. That has been AJ. And that has been Troy. Stay geeky, my friends.